Once the project is created, you are now looking at the Sound Structure Studio Channels page. This is where any changes to input and output processing can be made. As you look at the project, notice that each microphone is listed and all the settings for each channel are available. It looks like a lot of information, but it's really just the same information repeated for every signal used in the design. As you scroll the window to the right, you'll see the other input channels including the Polycom HDX video codec, the phone in channel, the stereo program audio channel, a signal generator, which is added by default to projects, and then the outputs are shown starting with the outputs to the HDX video codec, the amplifier output, and the phone output. All channels used in the design are shown on the channels page regardless of the number of devices that may be used in a design. In this example, we've only used one sound structure device, but larger designs could use up to eight sound structure devices. If we navigate to the matrix page, we can see how all the input signals and output signals are used. All the inputs are on the left and the outputs are across the top. For inputs, we see all eight microphones are listed alphabetically and shown as part of the mics group. We can collapse or expand the group by clicking on the up and down arrows. By using groups, it's easier to work on larger systems where there may be many microphones in the system. The mics group is created by default, but other groups can be added by using the edit groups button. The numbers immediately to the right of the channel names represent the input fader gain or attenuation associated with the channel. By default, the fader gain is zero, which means that there is neither any gain nor attenuation applied to each of the input signals. Zero dB means the signal is unchanged. When you look at the other inputs in the system, two of the HDX input channels in the Polycom HDX in-group the HDX PSTN in-channel and the HDX UI audio in-channel don't have an input fader control. That's because these channels come directly from the HDX and go directly into the matrix within sound structure. The signal generator is listed with a fader gain of minus 30 to ensure that when it is used, perhaps to test whether loudspeakers are connected to the system, it's not too loud initially. As with any of the fader values, they can be adjusted and made louder or quieter by double clicking on the cross point to bring up an edit cross point control and then adjusting the gain slider. The way the matrix is organized is similar to a spreadsheet where the columns represent the output signals and the output signals are comprised of sums of the input signals. The value of the individual cross points are shown in dB. Zero means leave the signal unchanged. Positive values mean adding gain, and negative values mean taking gain away. In this example, we can see that the program audio channel is the only signal that's sent to the HDX line mix output. Similarly, the phone in signal is sent to the HDX PSTN mix out. We also see that the microphones are summed to go out to the HDX stereo mics out output. In addition, we see those cross points are blue, which means that the conferencing version of the input processing is selected. This processing includes all the acoustic echo and noise cancellation processing and automatic microphone mixing. The style of the input processing, conferencing for mics to be sent to the remote side, sound reinforcement for microphones that are reinforced into the room, and none can be selected from the edit cross point control. These different processing styles will be described in a future example. The cross points with the white background are not run through an automatic microphone mixer because those signals are not microphone signals and therefore have the none gating type selected. The output that's sent to the amplifier includes all the remote audio and the stereo program audio. The output to the telephone output signals includes the processed microphone signals, the audio from the HDX system, but not including the HDX user interface audio by default, and the program audio. Notice that the phone input signal is not sent to the phone output signal. Unmuting the phone input signals to the phone output signals would create an audio loop where the remote participants would hear their own voice coming back to them, which would be bad. 
When mono and stereo signals are mixed together in the matrix, sound structure will take care of converting stereo signals to mono or mapping mono channels to stereo channels. In this example, the output amplifier is stereo and the program audio is stereo, which means left is mapped to left and right is mapped to right. The phone in signal is a mono signal and that gets mapped to both the left and right channels of the amplifier output. To edit any cross point, double click a cross point to bring up a slider. For example, to change the level of the program audio to the amplifier, double click the cross point and that will bring up the edit cross point control. Here the gain can be adjusted or the signal muted entirely. Different cross points may be adjusted by double clicking on the next cross point. The edit control for the first cross point does not need to be closed before editing the next cross point. Finally, the group of mics can be collapsed to allow you to see more channels on the matrix. You can also control all the microphones in the group by adjusting the group cross point. A shortcut to toggling the mute status of a channel may be made by right clicking on a cross point in the matrix. Once we're done customizing the matrix, let's move on to the wiring page. The wiring page shows the sound structure devices required in the design and also shows where all the input and output signals should be physically wired into the system. In this example, the stereo program audio sources would be connected to inputs 1 and 2. The eight table microphones would be connected to inputs 3 through 10. Inputs 11 and 12 are not being used and are available. Outputs 1 and 2 are connected to the amplifier's left and right inputs respectively. If the system's already been wired differently than shown on the wiring page, the wiring locations can be easily changed within Sound Structure Studio. For example, if the amplifier outputs are already wired to outputs 11 and 12, then it's a simple matter to click and drag the outputs to those new output locations. The last item to review in this lesson is to review the acoustic echo canceller reference selection. Going back to the channels page, we can expand out the AEC controls and see that the reference for all the microphones is set to the stereo amplifier channel named Amplifier. This is the default setting for conferencing and is selected because all the remote audio from the system is played into the amplifier and that's the audio source that can generate an acoustic echo if it's picked up by the microphone and sent back to the remote participants. Next, let's look at the presets page. This is where we can create full presets for the device, which store all the settings that are different from the defaults. And also where we can create partial presets, where partial presets are really a list of commands that can be executed by running a single command. By default, there will be a full preset that was created when the project was designed. Any changes we've made to the project that we want to keep the next time the sound structure boots up, we should make sure are saved. To save the settings to a preset, Click Save Selected. If you want to create new presets, you could save the settings to a new full preset. Sound structure systems also have the concept of a power on preset, so you can tell the system how you'd like the system to boot up. In that case, where there may be multiple presets, you can select the preset you'd like to have used when the system powers up. Finally, once you've made some setting adjustments or wiring changes and save settings to a preset, it's important to save the file to disk using the File Save or Save As options. These will ensure the project is stored properly to disk. If you have any unsafe settings that are different from the last preset you're working on, then the system will prompt you for whether you'd like to save those changes to a preset, create a new preset, or discard the changes. This completes our example of creating a project.